Hi everyone, my name is Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. Now, do you remember me super tuning this awesome Skywatcher 250p Dobsonian reflector? Now, if you've not seen that video, please check it out at the top. I did super tune this telescope and try to maximize its performance. Despite the telescope being really good quality, it does have some flaws. Yes, a Dobsonian telescope is an unbeatable telescope if you want the ultimate for uh, if you want an ultimate telescope for visual use. And the Dobsonian is the best bank for anybody's money, without a doubt. Unfortunately, this telescope does have a few flaws. And again, if you check that video at the top, I, I go in stages on how to improve its capabilities and its performance on there. Really is a highly recommend that you watch that video, particularly if you're an, an owner of a six inch, eight inch or a 10 inch, even up to a 12 inch Aperture Skywatcher Dobsonian uh, telescope. And this one has no motor drives. There's no bells and whistles on it. This is this is the telescope that you pay to start looking up. Without a doubt, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit, this Dobsonian. And again, very reasonable price, and it's within budget for a lot of people. All right, if you, if you want the wow factor for looking at the moon, the planets, and deep sky objects, and you want the best aperture you can afford, then a Dobsonian like this is unbeatable for its price. So again, please check it out at the top. I did that video and it's, it's seriously recommend that you should watch it. So from that on, I've been using this telescope quite extensively and I've been enjoying some awesome views from this telescope. It really is an amazing piece of equipment. Unfortunately, I found some more new ways to help improve its performance and maximize as much of the viewing pleasure as possible. And personally, guys and girls, there's loads of stuff that you can do with Dobsonian. There are so many projects you can do to help improve on the, its performance. So in this video, I am going to take you through some more super tuning on this mighty 250p. So before we start the video, please hit a like button. And again, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe onto my channel. And also, please share this video out. By sharing this video, might actually help someone else uh, help to improve on their performance on their existing Dobsonian. So again, sharing this video out will also help many others as well. Also, please hit the bell by hitting the notifications bell will keep you informed for any new videos that I'll publish out very, very soon. And believe me, I have got loads of projects up my sleeve. So please don't miss out. So if you want to find out more, what I'm going to do to super tune this Dobsonian once again, please keep watching and let's do this. Now, I've seen a lot of videos. Uh, really good videos out there on YouTube and don't get me wrong I've seen some where they've made their own like tilting plate so there's like a plate that you put the, the actual dob base on there and it has setting circles which is a great idea I've also seen some videos where you can cut out a decal uh, you can modify your own setting circles for the dob base on a either on a, a tilting plate and I've also seen some dob bases where they can actually mount the entire setting circle for the Altazimov as one big template. However a lot of telescopes have given you the space. Now on the Skywatcher you don't have much space for setting circles, which is really annoying. All right, and I thought I highly highlight this fact that yes, 
on the 8 inch and 6 inch models there's plenty of room however on the 250p classic there isn't and it's a real shame that I can't fit a setting circle however in this video I'm going to show you a different way now I've seen one guy do it on another YouTube and he basically used this program to modify and set some setting circles to do a complete template now the disadvantage of using a complete template is yes you can mount it onto this dob base but the problem with that is you've got to take it hot you've got to somehow find a printing shop or online shop which can print size setting circles as big as that I'll be honest with you guys and girls, I don't have any printing shops that can print out A0 or A1 sheets. So I'm going to show you my method of making your own setting circles without having to go to a printing specialised shop or go online, pay over the nose for a reticle or, or a, of a dub base of setting circle which costs a lot of money when you can actually make one yourself quite easily but you just got to take your time so I'm going to show you my own way of using setting circles on here cheap way to do it but it will take a bit of time it can be a bit tricky so with that, I want to keep the dub base because the dub base is pretty good and I want to keep it sort of looking standard but I don't want to add any extra features to it and that's the reason why, I mean don't get me wrong, if this dub base is looked after providing you bring it back inside from the cold elements or from the outside elements when you finish observing put this in a nice warm room let it dry out and you have no problems as you can see the telescope itself is pretty smart and I just want to keep it sort of nice looking but clean and having the setting circle upgrades now don't get me wrong the setting circles I'll be honest with you guys and girls and I'm sure there's quite a few of us who are own a lot of Dobsonian telescopes What's annoying thing is, why can't manufacturers already implement setting circles to allow you to use a telescope, use a, an app where you can find all these things, because setting circles are really handy. They're not, the, they're not accurate, they're okay, but as if you set these up properly, they are reasonably accurate. As long as you get them in the field of view, you're okay. You just might need to nudge the telescope slightly so you can get into view of the deep sky objects. Setting circles do work very well and plus it teaches you to navigate through the night sky without relying on a online app on your mobile phone. Again, I have highlighted in a video, oh, check out the link at the top, where I used a similar program using a mobile phone to, uh, to find the objects. But sometimes I do like and I do miss using the setting circles. All right? These setting circles are there so that you can, I, I think you actually learn better through the night sky with them. But you, you can find stuff, it may be a bit trickier, but sometimes I do miss the thrill of the hunt. I know it sounds very strange, but believe me, this is the most, most cost-effective way to save money, use Stellarium, find the targets, and use in setting circles. And by doing that, you can actually start to learn the sky better with these setting circles. In theory, you are the go-to. You move the telescope, once you know a known coordinates of a known star, you can move the telescope where 
that object lies, okay? It really is that simple. Two simple movements on the telescope and you, you're good to go. It really is that simple. So I want to keep using the dub base, all right, as original dub base, and with that, I need somehow to figure out how to set up my setting circles. So as you can see, what I've done, I've taken off the bottom base of my Dobsonian using the Skywatcher tools provided and you remove the center bolt to then relieve, to then show uh, the actual plastic bushing and then the uprated Dobsonian Altosimov bearing which I'm going to take out. So you remove all that and the first thing you want to do, now you can measure up the bottom if you want but I'm going to measure this one because that's where the setting circles are going to sit onto this dub base. So to provide an accurate reading, right, I'm going to, they're all see with Skywatcher, the quarter control on certain sizes can be a bit of a minefield. So we're going to measure this dub base. So grab yourself a tape measure, measure the base from edge to edge, ideally through the center line where the spindle or the bush fits. And I measure this at 51.3 centimeters. This size equates imperial size of 20 and 3 16th of an inch. Please take note of those sizes. Now remember, if you are got a Dobsonian like this on a Skywatcher, your dimensions might be a lot different to mine. So measure yours precisely because like with all Skywatcher products, the sizes can vary. So depending what model you have or what telescope may be a lot different than mine. So then everyone, once you've measured your dob base, once you know the diameter, there is a program I like to share to you guys and girls. Now, this is not new stuff. There is a, there are other YouTube videos that show this awesome little app. Now this app is called blocklayer.com. Now, this is the Imperial version but there is actually another version of this and this is the uh, the next one is the principal full scale circle divider so this one's in metric and the other is imperial however with the metric one that you see here has its limitations because um, there is something that's not quite right on this is that you try and orientate uh, these these segments to desired sort of length you need so there are limitations on the metric variant I don't know what it is but it doesn't seem that easy to to work out so for this purpose of this video I'm going to show you the the Imperial one so the Imperial one is a lot more accurate as you can see the setting circles are arranged better than they are on the the metric the metric one you can't flip the numbers round uh, you can't add the segments better on that one so and also this is in degrees as well so it's all in degrees each one of them has has degree formats and also with this is that um, this this segment here you can't flip it and also you can't have the number segments flipped around in different positions as you can with the Imperial. Now the Imperial is a lot more accurate to use. So first off, I'm just gonna walk through, talk through, through this program. There isn't a lot you can do all right, on this program. So I'm, I'm gonna do it as a run through, talk through. So the first off, once you've measured your diameter, 
I'm going to highlight that my diameter of my base is 20 inch and then it's 3 16 the center hole you don't really need the center hole is basically this bit how big this crosshair you want it to be or the circle you don't really need that all right it will become apparent later on in the video why you don't need it if you was going to print this entire shape this program you can print out the whole disk now what this program does allow you to do is able to print out a full scale of your DOB base and you can print out the whole entire setting circle using this program so we're going to go through the settings so we measured their base we know the center no holes quite irrelevant precision you'll leave it to one degree but what I will do is tick the five degree so you've got different segments as well in between that we will then want the outer markings but we want to leave off the inner markings we definitely need circle borders but I always highlight them in 10 line segments you can have 10 line segments if you want it really is up to you but to be honest with you, you don't really need it double lines you leave that as ticked dimensions you don't really need it all it does is tells you how big uh, this setting circle needs to be so here we've got a1 scale just there now this is the part I think is missing and I believe yeah it's missing on this part I have no idea why the metric version doesn't have this again invert the numbers so you flip them round upside down now the reason for that is when you are moving the dub base and the telescope around you'll see them upright as you move the telescope uh, dub base and you'll see it better than having it upside down so we have to have it we have to invert the numbers overline you don't really need because that's just segments sticking out so we take that off however we best to leave it on the black rim because when you shine a red torch it shows up better with a black display vernier we'll leave that unticked that's just scale I won't even bother with that so take that off now again another feature that's also missing is Wirelift Polaris for example if you look at Stellarium you'll notice there is a scale on the Altazimov grid and where I live as I'm rotating the base uh, Polaris is literally set at zero and why I turn the telescope leftwards I want the the part to rotate this way all right so we need to check this box here all right you'll notice that the segments are flipped over again the metric version doesn't have that so uh, in fact it does there so it does have some some features there but the metric does have it okay so we go to the Imperial now this is where it's a bit glitchy now right the these are just like settings that you've got to print off a series of copies and I find it this very frustrating you can't add the values of the numbers if you could add the values of numbers you'll know exactly what size so I had to make my setting circles and I had to do several attempts at this so please use paper first before you start printing out using cardboard so with this face I found that if you had this face setting set to about as close as damn it to the minimum you then set your font all the way down so that you can just see it the tick is basically the thicker lines I believe in fact no the tick is to readjust 
the uh, the segments that way as well. All right, so we want the segments to be clearly marked, but we don't want it too much because if we overlap the dub base, you won't see uh, these parts here. So we'll lower the face again. All right, to that point there. The thickness is we want to maximize the uh, these segments and the writing so we up it or we up it all the way up so you can see them we can we can reduce the, the face a little bit more to help like so rotation leave that unticked and that should be the settings that I've used to determine my setting circles on my Skywatcher 250p. Again, this may be different. You want to probably change yours to a different style. But this is the settings I use. Now, top tip is I would say screenshot this this part so you know the settings the next time. So once you screenshot it and you paste it on your paint software, whatever, you have the exact settings in case your setting circles uh, either goes messed up or it's, you've made a mistake or something. You can always go back to the settings and then readjust what you need to do. So once you've got that set circle, you can then print it off. Now what I found is when you print it off, it'll print out the entire thing, including this weird projector projector segment here. You don't really need it. So what I found is, so what I found with this is to is to print the diagrams in PDF. Okay, and it gives you a segment here. So once you select PDF size, what I find with this is you can call it whatever you call it, 250p, dob, setting circle. Okay, you want the scale to be 100%, so it's the full size you want. It then ask you for what size now I you can have this on a1 or a0 but stick to a1 because we want to use a lot less paper but we're going to maximize it as much as we can so you add to a PDF and it'll save that. You then open the file. Okay, and that's your, that is your complete setting circle, just there. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to save it. As you can see, I have done loads of samples of this design hence the reason why I've gone through so many types you've got to play about with it so when you print it off you're gonna waste the paper but you're not gonna waste any cardboard so once you've done it correctly you don't make that mistake so you want it as a PDF okay and we're just going to save it to desktop for time being so that is the setting circle saved so as you can see this is a trick i'm going to show you now for me to print this full size image of the setting circle I will have to send this to a professional printing workshop or online workshop 
But one thing I find out is, one, it's very expensive. Two, some of the software that they use, when you try to print it off, it doesn't work very well. For some sort of reason, um, some programs that you go online don't particularly like this format. And it goes horribly wrong. So one thing I found is get yourself... Is get yourself this program. Now, the program that I use to do this is I go to Adobe Acrobat DC. With this Adobe Acrobat, it gives me the full image of that setting circle. What we're going to do is we're going to print this actual setting circle to full scale. We click on the print box and this is the settings. Now here's my Canon AMG 2900 right I'm just gonna copy it with one copy properties I'm just gonna make sure when I print it out first I'm gonna print it out using the paper so obviously use it as a standard copy however once you're happy with your setting circle you then select to high if you want to print over cardboard now I've already done this printed it out I'm happy with results I'm now going to use cardboard so the most important key aspects is make sure you have your overlap now the overlap enables you when it prints out each segment of your setting circle it will print out a gap so that you can once you cut it out you can join the parts together now you can see where I'm coming from so yeah make sure you got your segments first and then make sure that I'm printing in high quality that's only if I'm printing in cardboard so as you can see here these squares here represents the A4 sheets and as you can see here This circle will fulfill the entire disc itself. So you can see there that is the full size. We've got an overlap, and uh, what it will do is it will, it will print out each of those segments one by one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these printed parts out and we're going to cut them and join them together all right so that you'll have one entire disc this is the only way you can do this all right at home unless you've got a professional printer that can print a1 or a0 paper formats you don't need to bother with this however for most of us we have an a3 or a4 printers we don't have much money but here this is the way you can do this all right also I need to add is you don't need to print the project the, that protractor which is at the back you don't need to do that so what we do is just click on current and what what that will do is just print off just this side only what we're doing is we're going to save a bit of paper as we're doing this so again all you do is just press print and then it'll print you'll print out all the segments together so when you use Acrobat Adobe DC you should have a full-scale setting circle like this so what happen is when you print it out you'll have several A4 sheets this is the exact size of your setting circle so this will be the base where you'll cut these out and you'll place them onto your dot base so as you can see it's quite a large diameter now if I had a printing service nearby I would print this in the full A0 or A1 sheeting but unfortunately I don't have that facility and this is the only way I can do this so yes what will happen is I will cut these down to size so each of them will be separate segments 
and then I'll join them together. So this is another way you could do it. By all means, you can't beat the full scale on a one sheet. But if you want to save money, then this is the way you're going to have to do it. And yes, it will be a bit fiddly. So we'll proceed to the next step and I'll show you what to do next. So after you use the program and you decide how you want your setting circles, ideally what I would suggest is to print a rough copy first. Okay, and the reason why I'm saying this is that not all the bases are exact same size. All right, because it's Chinese quality, the quality control isn't that great. So it just depends on the dob base. Just measure up your dob base, see if it matches. So here I made rough copies of the setting circles themselves. Now, as you can see, they're all, they're all in different sections, okay? Once you're happy with that, you can then cut them out and you'll see the little segments, right? So here's the ones I've made earlier. Now these are cardboard because these ones here are the correct size for my dob base. So you'll cut out the segments. Point to note, when you cut out these segments, I always tend to overlap them, all right? So you can glue them together. So I'll just show you an example. See, like with this part, if you take a closer look, We've got one segment, and if I show you, you can see I've overlapped. So when you join this together, all right, you want the segments to line up, okay? So as you can see there, if I join that 75, you can see it lines up perfectly, okay? And that's the secret of my setting circles. So you want to cut each part carefully. And as you're cutting each part, just make sure that whatever segment you're doing, just re just, just check. Okay, I see like with this one, 180 degrees one. Again, yes, the overlap. But when you line them up, okay, you can see there we've got 180 bang on there okay so you've got to do a bit of trial and error and just line them up okay so that's the one thing i need to highlight when you're cutting these segments so what i've done here is i've temporarily put the setting circles i lined them up with tape, okay now the good thing about this, it's not a permanent fix, so you can play about with the the whole entire setting circle. So this is just a final check to see how, how I get on. Alright, so far it's looking rather sweet at the moment. So now, once you're happy, you can then print out the cardboard printouts, alright? So as you can see. I've already made these cardboard inserts and what we're going to do is we're going to laminate them so you can get some laminated A4 sheets like so and if you've got a laminator you can place these parts that you've uh, checked all right and then once you're happy you can then place these cardboard cutouts all right and then put it through the laminating machine so if you've got a laminator use some a4 laminator sheets i prefer to use decent quality laminating sheets these are 100 microns all right you can use 80 but it's a bit too thin so i used 100 micron laminated sheets all right and i pass this through my laminator and then your finished product should look like this. So here is some of my finished laminated parts. And as you can see there, I've laminated through. I have overlapped them as well, but you can see straight away 
that uh, I've done a good job. So I've, all I've done with this is I've made sure that I can, I've laminated and I've cut as close as possible to the actual outer ring here. But the inner ring, it doesn't matter. You can overlap it, all right? So you've overlapped them. So you all your six, six segments here are all, all laminated. And the reason why I'm laminated these parts is to prevent uh, damp getting into the decal and ruin the set, setting circle itself, all right? So the reason why we're laminating is to protect uh, this scale from moisture all right, and, and uh, we should be good to go. So you should have six segments in there, all ready to go. Okay, so as you see there, we're focusing on one of the segments, between the two segments. All you do is put a small, so what you do is put a small blob of glue, of super glue, Okay, like so. All right, so you got a small blob of super glue like that. And then what you do is you carefully line up the uh, setting circle. Okay, so we need to line her up like so. And just take your time. All right, don't rush it. What we do is just leave that to dry. Okay. Give it a good half hour. And then move on to the next segment. Do the same process. And keep doing it bit by bit. Until the whole setting circle is complete. What I will do is get myself an issued screwdriver and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slacken these screws here. So I'm going to remove the screws. I'm going to remove the Altozimov bearing. Again, this is only if you modified it on the standard sky washer you won't have this you just have a small nylon washer to remove and then now you're just going to lift her up like so we made sure we are using the correct side so the holes are flush never use the base where the holes are as you can see there the holes have um, that your exposed wood underneath so do it from this side you'll notice I have put double-sided tape I'm not going to use super glue to stick the setting circle because I don't want a permanent fix I want the fix to be a good tight fix won't come off easily but also if the decal does get if the decal or the setting circle does get damaged I can always remove it and I can just replace it. So again, you stick these uh, using double-sided tape, you take, peel off, you stick on the thing and you peel off using a sharp knife to peel off the backing. Okay, so as you can see there, I'm just peeling off one of the tapes like so. so it depends how much tape you want to use. You don't need to use as much as what I've using. But the trick is, and I make and to be honest with you, make sure to get zero near to the centre hole. Okay? It doesn't have to be spot on. You can use a a square to do that. Okay? You can level the square like so in line with the holes here okay and you can do it that way to figure out your center okay so it is a bit tricky and at right angle 
just measure where the center of that where that middle bolt is it gives you a rough estimate of where the zero needs to be so I just make a line across like that with a permanent marker and it gives me a rough indication where zero needs to be you then carefully place your setting circle over where the zero is going to be so we're on there unfortunately I made a slight mistake I wasn't quite on that part as well that I hope to have had it a lot better than this well because we've got double sided tape stuck on there it's very hard to prise it off okay without damaging the reticle so I can remove it but I not, don't want to do it the main thing you need to consider is making sure that these that these segments are aligned with each other properly so don't worry if you're slightly not quite right there like I am as long as your these are accurate you should be good to go so as you can see there I'm slightly off off the edge here which is a bit of a bit of a shame I'm not really quite happy with that but uh, I was just slightly off if I was just a little bit more I could have it could have been a lot better so as you can see we've got the bearing the bottom and this part as well now fixed together now as you can see there we've got a zero and uh, as you can see it looks pretty good actually look at that bit of a shame that wasn't completely flush which is a real shame but as long as your your alignments these these parts here the scale is lined up okay very crucial so making sure that these are lined up properly and as you can see there we have got the entire disc on there and all the segments are all properly aligned up so don't worry if you're slightly off doesn't matter so the next item that you're going to need is get yourself some sheet of 0.5 millimeter thick mild steel sheeting okay reason i got mild steel is because it's cheaper uh, and uh, i will explain further in the video why we're using mild steel but really cheap to buy this is around about 500 millimeters long or 50 centimeters long and uh, what i've done is i've already cut a piece and i've cut as you can see here a strip so i used a dremel and this is uh, this is 30 millimeters in width all right so this is a 30 millimeter strip and here I've marked out 20 millimeters at this end and I've just drawn a line at each end as a pointer. So as you can see there, I've cut off those little ends to give me a pointer and uh, also I've used um, a file just to file down the sharp edges that I've cut all right so it's nice and blunt so I don't slice my hand off all right but uh, you can use sandpaper if you wish just to just just get off the, the horrible burrs okay you don't want to cut your hands by doing it so that's the pointer completed then with your pointer you want to line up as if you're placing the pointer on the scale now the disadvantage of this base is that this pointer can only go so far you can't have it all the way up like so because what happened is the part of the structure will collide onto the pointer so you've got to position the pointer in a way so that 
the pointer does not collide onto part of the structure. So as you rotate it round, you just got to check each size. As long as the scale and the point is aligned, you should be okay. You know what I mean? So the back ones are okay. You can go further in. But the front part, which is where the handle side is, you can't. So you've got to position the pointer in a way so it's clear from the actual structure itself there. And it is quite simple to do. All you do is just you rotate all the way around, grab yourself a pen, okay, and with that you need to position the pointer so that you're literally you've literally got at least a, a one mil or two mil gap and get yourself a marker pen and with that you just you just draw a line across like so okay so I've got a bit of a gap and then there's a line then with that line you've marked up you then grab yourself a set of pliers and then you want to position the pliers like so grab hold of it and then you bend it like so okay at a 90 degree okay so you bent it at a 90 degree like that so now we've uh, we're going to measure the base and what we're going to do is measure roughly how much a gap we need and I measured that at 45 millimeters or 4.5 centimeters so with that 45 millimeters we measured we're just going to mark it onto the arrow as you can see with a straight edge you could use a tape measure if you wish and we're just going to mark out that position so there's 45 millimeters and then what we're going to do is we're going to mark out that line and there's our 45 millimeters with this we are going to hold the material using a set of pliers and we're going to bend this to 90 degrees like so so as you can see there we've got 90 degrees and uh, that's what your pointer should look like so now we've got we're going to line up the pointer and as you can see with that 45 millimeters you can you can see now that you've got the pointer like so is now positioned so it gives you a bit of a gap all right so you've got like a good five mil gap and as you rotate the base you can tell straight away from the the point where it was just about to touch is well clear so now we're at the bottom of the base and we've got a pointer as you can see here i've marked out a line it doesn't really matter how much material you need but you just need enough so that your pointer is at least a good two maybe three mil of play away from the side okay and you don't want it uh, this metal to be too close to the to the main uh, nut right for the bearing okay all right and you're gonna mark out that position and then we're gonna cut this part here so as you can see we drill a, a four point we draw we drilled a 3.5 millimeter diameter hole don't drill all the way through all right if you do that you're going to damage the uprated bearing behind that okay so be careful so only drill down to about three to four millimeter in depth and uh, as you can see here i've drilled a i've cut this down on the pointer 
and the pointer has a 4.5 mil hole okay for my screw now it doesn't matter what size screw size you want to use but I've got one that's at 3.5 which is quite a heavy duty screw and as long as you've drilled the hole and you haven't drilled it all the way through don't make sure you don't do that just drill it in a way so that this plate uh, matches okay so you don't want to put too much in there okay so that's that complete you then get yourself some adhesive magnetic strips here's one I've pre-cut okay before you use this strip okay it has adhesive backing you need to straighten the tape out okay like so strain it out first okay just to uh, make sure that it's nice and straight so once you flatten it out as best you can okay you then peel off the backing okay then you place your adhesive tape between the two rear legs like so okay and then you just line up the tape okay like so and just press down firmly like that now I've got the uh, the tape you then get your pointer back on and as you can see I'm using a 3.5 mil pause drive screw I've also put two wash washers one here in the front and then one behind okay okay and then I'll line this up to the hole like so you then get your screwdriver and then you can just use the screwdriver you don't have to have this screw all the way in okay just enough so you've got a bit of a free play okay as you can see here when you pull down this part here okay this magnetic strip sticks onto the pointer and locks it in place so I've got a bit of a gap here all right and uh, this is your locking mechanism so uh, as your you can reposition your pointer left and right like so so once the point is complete okay the next modification is I got myself a bubble level like this again the link is at the description below to order this uh, this one's got uh, adjustments up to 60 degrees down to dead center all right it's just a normal ground spirit bubble level I've also applied so double-sided tape and all I can do is peel off the back like so all right and I can just quickly place ideally try and get as close to the to the center as possible okay so once you get as where you got where you get this as center as possible all right there it is and you just fix it on there like so so that is your spirit level all right so you need to level the base onto even ground all right and that's all you need to do there you can use screws you can drill it in there if you wish but personally I don't like that I want to minimize as much drilling onto the base I want to try and keep it nice and clean and smart and and try not to modify the base as such and we have now finished our pointer as you can see here I've just spray painted it orange uh, with a nice color orange as well so that uh, when you shine a red torch the orange shows up uh, quite a lot so you can clearly see the marker uh, also on the actual pointer I've also put a little bit of electrician's tape across the edges all right so that you don't uh, so you so you don't um, nick, nick your hand okay because it's quite sharp because it's quite a thin 
uh, mild steel but as you can see I've drawn a line as well all across and uh, you can clearly see straight away that it's uh, it's quite a nice finish and then we're just going to fit the marker over let it hang okay and then find a hole and then you're just going to just screw the screw there so as you can see with the marker it overlaps slightly onto the setting circle and as you rotate it round you're just going to check for final adjustments you may need to bend the actual plate all right so it doesn't catch on the edges particularly on this part obviously I'm like a good two mil gap as I rotate it around to the other side again I'm still clear with a two mil gap I can still see uh, the the arrow pointing on the decal so as I rotate it around all right I can read the setting circle all right quite easily the good thing about this marker is I've done it as a tight fit uh, I did it at 45 millimeters is the gap which is probably a bit too much you may want to do it at 50 millimeter all right so it gives you a bit of a clearance for me I've made it quite well that I've got enough just enough just to rotate it round okay and set it to zero okay so it's the whole idea of this mechanism is even though you're not quite zero all right so when you line against the north star or any star you set uh, the the uh, the circle at um, you set the setting circle at zero particular Polaris for example so Polaris is always at zero okay but uh, with this design I can rotate it round where I want it all right it gives me a good 20 degrees of clearance either side all right doesn't matter where you want to place it but that's how that's how I've designed it okay so it gives me 20 20 mil, uh, 20 degrees either way more or less I can go to about 25 but I think I'm pushing my luck there but as you can see there that's how it is it is designed all right so you can clearly see the marker all right so when you shine your torch the orange glow will light up okay so it will show up very well so then guys and girls my next modification is this now as you can see if we take a closer look I have got a digital angle gauge all right and this angle gauge is a, a UPAR now I've heard with a lot of astronomers they use a, a Wixie digital gauge well this one is actually slightly different now it's still a digital gauge and it, what it does it, it it measures the the tilt of your optical tube so it measures your latitude or altitude and with this altitude it measures the uh, the angle in degrees uh, the one thing I do like about this item is it's powered by two triple uh, A batteries okay so with these batteries um, will last a long time it has a magnetic base so when you plug it onto the tube okay it stays in place okay like so now unlike the Vixie this is cheaper than the Vixie and also there are there are some better touches with this device and one thing I do like is there is a, a spirit bubble level which is very handy if you want to set the angle gauge to zero so with this spirit bubble level you can tilt the tube at zero degrees so it's horizontal as straight as possible before you zero the gauge all right and why zeroing the gauge once you're there you'll get a much more accurate reading on your altitude there are some nice uh, touches uh, there is a yet yeah, there is a green display on this so to activate the display all you do is you switch it on okay and then you hold this button here that says hold 
okay so you press the hold button all right it switches it off so it can preserve so as it preserves your night vision all you do is use a red torch to shine on there or you can use it with the green light okay it really is up to you but the green light's pretty bright and it might uh, ruin your night vision so unlike the Vixi I don't think there's a dis a rear display on the Vixi but on this there's a nice green light to it so you can clearly see the reading so to use this digital angle gauge all you do is just mount it on the actual base all right it doesn't matter where you want it but you want it on top of the optical tube all right what you're going to do is you're going to angle to zero degrees like so now this is where the spirit bubble comes in handy right so when i tilt it right i want it to get it more or less close to the uh the middle okay so i tighten up the clutches so that it's it's not going to slip or fall and i'm just going to move the optical tube to where i'm sort of level as you can see there the bubble level if we zoom in you can see the bubble level is level okay so then we do is we press zero now it works out there's already an angle it's a slight angle so I'm just going to illuminate it so you can see the display now as you can see on the display it's it's literally like 0 0.1 degree or one tenth of a degree so all i do is just readjust it slightly up until i'm zero all right it's really accurate but as you can see there it's like literally a few nudges now we're bang on zero you'll see at the top there is an angle to where it's out so it will show you on the display if we take a closer look on the display so as you can see there you see the zero there at the top of the left hand part of the screen so we bang on zero that is def that is the altitude set to zero all right and uh, in my location polaris would be around about 56 degrees so to find that all i need to do is push the tube up like so until i get to 56. all right and you keep tilting it until you get to the angle you require as you can see there's loads of uh read out there so i'm almost there so we're almost there and it's literally minute nudges but um so we got 56 degrees so there you go you got i'm at 56 degrees and that will be where Polaris would be in my location as you can see there that handy feature with the zero it tells you how much you levitated so it points up so it obviously indicates that you've got the the angle upwards and uh, it also shows you when you've got the angle downwards in which is minus so there's nice key features there don't get too obsessive being slightly out by a 0.5 or 0.10 of a degree because seriously as long as you can see it as long as you can see it uh, see Polaris or anything that you're viewing in your eyepiece you're completely fine all right so the next mod is this is get yourself a compass this is a 40 millimeter compass now it is cheap it's not the best but uh, you can get away with just mounting uh, the, the compass on the dub base. Now, again, not very 
they're not very good quality compass and I wouldn't really recommend uh, a typical compass like that but the best compass to buy what I reckon is get yourself a proper navigation compass like this one now this one you could buy around for about 10 maybe 20 pounds for a decent compass all right and this is really good all right and all you do is you put it on the base like that and uh, you can point to magnetic north through that now it won't go through true north but it will get too close to magnetic north which when you rotate the the dub base if you take a closer look as you take a closer look you see that the, the markings will line up like so to point towards uh, point towards magnetic north so this device is very good for its purpose and in order for the setting circles to work you'll need a compass like that all right so that you line up to as close as possible to north it is crucial that you get the dub base at the home position like that so a good compass like that will get you very close to Polaris, all right, without a doubt. Now the next mods are these. Now, as you can see here, I've got three of these. Now, when you order these, you have to order a pair, a set of these. But um, I had to order four, which is not really necessary. However, what these are, are solid, CNC aluminium bed risers and what these are going to be used are going to level my dub base again they're not bad they're not bad quality made but they're a lot sturdy as well that's why I got these because they have rubber pads on there which you have to stick them yourself and they have this very fine thread and as you turn uh, the um, this part here you can see straight away that they increase the um, uh, the depth up to about 40 millimeter of play so you can really extend these in and out okay I have greased them with some geo optic grease just to lubricate the threads okay because when you first get these these are a bit um, they're a bit um, tight so a bit of grease will help make them operate a lot smoother now these are 40 millimeter in, in diameter and they don't weigh that much and they weigh around 100 grams so they're not heavy but one thing I like about them is that they are quite solid robust aluminium solid metal CNC parts so these I've got uh, I've got three of these but ideally when you order them you get them as a pair all right so you will have one extra one so I'm going to show you how these are installed on the dub base so the next mod I want to show you is this I've got these uh, night reader pro now this is a red LED flashlight very small costs around about 10 to 12 pounds seems a bit pricey but you can actually set the brightness on these there's the instructions there that tells you how to use it I'm not going to go too much in detail on that because it just makes my um, video even longer but as you can see as we take it out of the box these are available from First Light Optics and uh, they're designed by a, 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 D, a David Chandler company now as you can see here they have it's nice compact as we take it out and as you can see it's got a nice little key ring and it's got a very bright red LED you can set these to set the, the dimness as well but um, I'm going to use it for a different purpose now these are great for viewing star maps and stuff like that and you can use it for when you're trying to find stuff uh, use your uh, telescope setup 
and uh, you can't see at night so this torch will enable you to be able to see in the dark without ruining your night vision which is very crucial so as you can see there nice little um, device there here's one that I modded slightly as you can see here if we take a close look I have bent a steel bar a tiny steel rod about 20 degrees and all I've done was just use some electrician's tape to wrap around uh, this thin piece of rod As you can see we've got the modifications for these bed risers and as you can see I've mounted these on a flat surface now these bed risers are positioned on every see every little leg here as you can see there's one there there's one there and there's one there and they are centrally on each position and the good thing about these is because they are have a fine thread you can adjust each one in situ right up and down now these only work on a hard surface so a pavement is ideal if you're going to set these out in the field whether it's on the even ground then I wouldn't recommend these modifications however these are great for my patio floor all right and these are just quite a good addition they're very easy it's a non-destructible mod the only uh, the only thing I would recommend is when you set these is have the dob base make sure that the telescope is off before you do that so when you adjust these your hand does not get caught and trapped if the telescope weight lands and falls okay so you need to do the initial setup with these steps where with these bed bed risers so as you adjust it as you adjust each point you need to get your bubble level centered okay and nice and level so what these bed risers will enable you to do that with some adjustment in situ to then get your spirit bubble level all right so as you can see it's all secure and all you have to do is with that is then you can place your telescope on there as you can see here we've got my next modification which is that LED torch all right with this slight bent uh, rod all right and as you can see here I have placed some magnetic pads on the pointer and all you do is you just switch on the light as you can see the red light shows the orange pointer quite effectively and as you clip it on there all right it gives you a temporary fix so as you can see we switch off the light and you can see the LED and the pointer just there all right and as I rotate the base because I've bent the the torch uh, the rod I can move the base and you can see the corner bits are very close so it's it's a bit awkward if it's in the way you might need to re-bend the rod further back but as you can see you can see the pointer and the decal readings on there without no hassle and as you rotate the base all right you can see where you want to go all right so there's zero where polaris is meant to be it's a nice little handy feature you don't have to do this but i think it's a nice little cool way to make it easy for you guys and girls so that you can navigate the stars all right find the coordinates and you don't have to struggle it's just a nice little necessity and uh, the good thing is about this it's a temporary fix you can always remove it if you don't want it you can just shine it like normal it really is up to you there's that one okay if it's too bright all you do is just hold the button like so and then you've got the the reading you want so you've got the the right correct that correct dimness so as you can see there are the two lights there and uh, this is one of them where I've put a magnetic part there as you can see all right just stuck on there and you can angle exactly where you want 
on the angle gauge okay so you've got two lights so you can see the the readings on the altosimov and the uh, altitude now again prove to you guys and girls uh, see there the base as well the bed rises the almium bed rises can take the whole weight of the telescope with everything on there all right as needed so yes they can handle the weight but it's not recommended to use these on uneven ground particular if it's on a grassy verge or whatever however if you've got a patio or decking or even concrete pavements all right or hard surface or hard standing surface these are ideal and the good thing about these is it's a non-destructive mod you're not cutting into the base because that's what i just don't want i want to keep the dobsonian telescope all standard untouched now the next best upgrade is this now as you can see here i have got a stool now believe it or not uh, this is not my idea and uh, I actually want to thank Joe uh, for this idea and I didn't think it was going to work but actually this is probably one of the best things I've actually bought in a while. Now I've bought a lot of Astro chairs over the years and even tried to make one but for some sort of reason this seems to be the perfect match for looking through this telescope and uh, I must admit, thank you, Joe, for this great idea. Again, if you've not seen Joe's channel, please check him, check him out in the description below. And uh, please uh, subscribe onto his channel. A really good channel. He has a true passion for astronomy. And I must admit, he's got some brilliant ideas. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank him for this great idea. So, like always, it's not a cheap item totally get but it's well made it's solid wood and I must admit I can sit down there and I can adjust the height of the uh, of the telescope uh, of the stool and this stool blade or not is absolutely fantastic so as you can see I, I'm sat down and it's exactly the perfect height for visual all right I can l safely I can comfortably observe the night sky even at top of zenith all right with this stool and it's true what they say if you're more comfortable in a nice comfortable position you can actually see more detail on the deep sky objects and by providing that you're comfortable and you're warm you do actually see a lot more because you're more you're using your eyes to concentrate on the faint detail and that's this that's the beauty about astronomy is people make the the mistake of looking for an eyepiece and expect to see wow wow instantly you've got to focus through the eyepiece and study and use the averted trick where you look away slightly you actually start to see more detail as you're looking at those faint fuzzies and the more you focus through the eyepiece the more you can see all right don't make the mistake of looking straight through the eyepiece and expect instant results you've got to study through the eyepiece and what this stool enables to do that is once if you're more comfortable and you're sat down in a nice comfortable position and you're warm you can, your eyes were able to see more i like to to wish to say thanks to joe for this awesome idea i don't think uh, i would find a stool perfect for astronomy but this one you can get is absolutely amazing and again i will provide the links uh, in the description for this stool and again please check out joe's channel really good uh, uh, channel as well he does cover a lot of great stuff in there so please uh, check it check his channel out and share some love so to set up my telescope I place the dob base onto a level ground ideally some hard standing sturdy ground I then use the bed risers to adjust the spirit level so it becomes zero 
on the bu bubble level itself. So you want that bubble to be set bang on in the middle. You then point using the compass, you then use the compass, place it on the base and point the compass towards the north, like so. Then, I reset the pointer on the altazimuth base and set it to zero, indicating on the decal. And now go across to tilt the optical tube the, to set the altitude and set it using my angle gauge as I tilt it towards and I keep going until I get dead on zero. You'll notice that the spirit bubble also helps massively there. It is very sensitive to adjust. Now the telescope is now set at home position. So now with the telescope set at home position, what we've done using Stellarium, I have set the telescope to point north towards Polaris. Polaris through Stellarium is set at zero degrees, as you can see in this picture. This will determine where you live in your location or how high Polaris is. So for my location, Polaris is around about 56 degrees, but this will determine where you live. So depends where you live on Earth, Polaris might be higher or low to your location. So remember to set your Dobson into home position, you must remember the four principles. So don't forget to level the Dob on level ground, point to north using a compass, reset the altazimuth pointer to zero, set the altitude by moving the optical tube to zero degrees. You must set this home position to allow the setting circles to work. So we're going to locate the moon using the setting circles. Pointing north. We're making sure that we are zero. We're going over to Stellarium. We find the moon. And this is the values you're after. Altars out. So 88 come or eight and a half just about and 22 and 30. There you go. So 88 and 22. So remember those values. I'm going to move the dob base, moving the altasm off. There we may keep going. And as you see, eighty-eight. Yeah, eighty-eight. We then move, we tilt the alt altitude to twenty-two. about 22 30 oh, 
Okay, we'll try it on that at value. And 88. As you can see, the telescope looks like it's pointing towards the moon in that general direction. And as we check through, I've not looked through anything. As you can see now, look at that. So it just shows you that setting circles does actually work. We're not quite in the field of view, but as you can see there in that picture, the setting circles really does work. So 88, 22, there is some inaccuracy. But as you can see, that is really impressive stuff. We are using a narrow field of view through the camera, but if you're using an eyepiece, you'll be spot on there. So the eyepiece will help widen the field of view. If you use a wide field eyepiece, you'll get there. But as you can see there, I'm really impressed with the results. And I have not looked through these optical devices just there. So that really is absolutely awesome. We managed to locate the moon using those setting circles and this is really impressive results really is i'm really impressed So then guys and girls, as you can see, it worked for the moon. Now, if you want to find deep sky objects, first thing I would do is line up to a bright star, right? And I'm lined up to Polaris. As you can see at the bottom, I'm set at zero degrees there. And me altitude is 56.15 so that is the exact location of Polaris as you see if I turn off the thing you can see there's Polaris there so as we move over across we go into Stellarium I'm going to take off and as you can see on Stellarium we just go find Polaris and these are your figures so as you can see there we've clicked on Polaris and the figures there is 0 degrees and 56.54 so yes there is some inaccuracies with my setting circle but it's got me into Polaris without no problems So we've got Polaris as it is, and we're now going to look for Messier 45. So we're going to find Messier 45. And it's in Taurus. So there we go. So M45 is literally near the moon. So as you can see there, we look at the figures. So Altar's 101 and it's 36 degrees. So 101, 36. 
So what we're going to do is move the base to 36 to 101 I mean so move 101 Like so. Okay. Then we're just going to go move to thirty six. Drop it down to thirty six. Okay. Dim that out, and as you can see, there we go. We've got the major, got the major uh, stars in Pleiades. Yeah, you can just see that there. So, I'm just going to move it up. Look at that. There we go. So yes, you do have to uh, jig it around a bit, get it central. So we've definitely found a bright deep sky object on there. That's really good, really good. So then guys and girls, we're going to image Great, well, we're going to get the Great Orion Nebula. This is the coordinates on Stellarium. If we take a close look, 127 and 16 degrees. Right, so that there, that value there, Altars, so 127, 16 degrees. So, like always, we got Polaris in there. We are set zero, and we're at 56 degrees there. We need to rotate the telescope. Hundred and twenty-six. Okay, somewhere about there. Okay. Then we're going to tilt the altazimuth, uh, the, the altitude down to 16. Okay. So, dim down the thing. Now bear with me. I think we've got it. I'm just going to look through. Yeah, it's definitely in view. That's uh, it's definitely in view of the viewfinder. I think that's bit of it there. So we're going to go up the exposure. But don't forget, right, we've got it now. we just got it there. So it is there, but because of that moon. Yeah. I'm just going to check the, the readings. See, slightly out there. So I've obviously not had it adjusted, but I think it was probably 127, so I'm slightly out. So as you can see, it's not completely foolproof, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Now, if I had my eyepiece, I would be able to get into there. But uh, if I... Yeah, you can see there, straight away, 
it is there just take off the light yeah it is there but because of the yeah but because of the uh, the light from the sun uh, from the light of the moon it really has deteriorated the image okay a lot so the Rhine Nebula is definitely there that's definitely Rhine Nebula there you can see the trapezium on there um, don't forget I am using uh, I'm using uh, the uh, video function which tends to crop the image a lot so you do get a reduced field of view yeah I'm just checking it will be around about 128 now but you can see it does work and I must admit uh, you just have to play about with it I will, I will definitely use a high I would definitely use a wide field tell this I would definitely use a wide field eyepiece for this without a doubt because um, I must admit I will be able to capture that through the tell through the eyepiece with this but it does work shame about the shame about the uh, the actual it's shame about the actual moon being there because um, that is totally I've got the center corner out but it's a lot less it's a lot less reduced with the light pollution from the moon so it's a it's a real shame it really is a real shame but the whole point of this video is to prove to you guys and girls that setting circles does work we will check the the settings so we've got about 128 there yeah 128 and 16.40 we're just going to go over to computer to confirm it all right so yeah um on there it's 129 so yeah slightly out and 16 degrees 49 so I'm slightly out but it's not to worry but the thing is the setting circles does work and I must admit if I was using the eyepiece a wide field eyepiece I will get that interview of the telescope so the whole point of this is to prove to you guys and girls without any without any uh, cuts in the video that is definitely genuine and uh, I must admit um, really impressive results well 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 guys and girls what do you reckon absolutely fantastic I must admit those setting circles have really made observing a lot easier which in comparison if you look at some of the latest technology uh, that use the star sense for example that you get with Celestron uh, even with some of the apps that can you, you can use to point the telescope to where you think it's going to be in, in the sky personally I think they're very glitchy and uh, I must admit they're sort of hit and miss How, however with setting circles they are if you're using like Stellarium or something like that that's much more accurate those readings are very accurate okay point taken I wasn't quite in the same field of view but I was using the camera so the camera's got a narrow field of view compared to an eyepiece like uh, this Celeste like this Explorer Scientific eyepiece I will get a much wider field of view so some of the objects yes weren't quite in the center that I hoped uh, there may be some inaccuracies as well maybe I've not got the dob base level enough or I haven't got the telescope pointing true north there are several factors but what I'm trying to get to you guys and girls is the setting circles work very effectively and they're very easy to use once you get the telescope set up pointing north level level ground and set at zero and making sure that the altitude is also set level as well to be honest with you 
this, the, the setting circles are really are accurate for a Dobsonian telescope. And to be honest with you, I can find a range, a huge range of targets in the night sky using those coordinates that set through Stellarium or any other app. You're basically the go-to. And by doing that, you're learning the skies a lot more uh, compared to just using an app on your phone. The app on the phone is great, but as soon as you get some magnetic or, st or, or anything that's metallic, it does actually affect the accuracy of uh, the, the app you use on the mobile phone. Hence the reason why some people have problems with using the star sense. It is a bit glitchy. But if you're prepared to do the actual work and build yourself a set of setting circles on your dub base and get the, uh, the awesome little angle gauge, okay, you can find the coordinates using Stellarium very, very effectively. And I'll be honest with you guys and girls, I did not have the best skies. I did have moon, which totally washed out some of the deep sky objects, which again, you need to learn from that from your mistakes is when you're observing deep sky or faint fuzzies ideally observe using the telescope on the on a moonless night preferably that will maximize the light con that will maximize uh, the light grasp of the telescope you will be able to see the faint fuzzies so providing you use a red torch and you observe on a moonless night you can't get away with a crescent maybe a half moon, but you're really pushing your luck. Ideally, use a telescope on a moonless night, you will guarantee to see these faint fuzzies with a lot of detail through this telescope, for example. And using those setting circles, you're saving yourself a ton of money, and believe me, you actually learn the skies better because you start to understand, as you start to use Solarium, the Stellarium, all that is, is an online map in your location and it's tracking all the time. So all those objects are moving constantly as the Earth's rotating around, all right? And hence the reason why these objects move. So that's why the readings does change from time to time. So, like always, if you're trying to find an object, you can, if you know the settings on a given bright star, fix onto the bright star, use Stellarium, find those coordinates, and you can then set the, um, the pointer to that where that star is likely to be. Personally, to begin with, I will stick with Polaris, because Polaris seems to be a very easy target, and you can set it to zero, and you just level the telescope to 56 degrees, depending on the location you're at, all right? Depends on how high or how low Polaris is. And uh, use that star, and then use Stellarium, like always, find the coordinates, and move the telescope where the, the dub base and the angle uh, gauge will tell you. All right, it really is that simple. It really is. And the good thing about it is you start to learn the night sky better than any given app. And these star sense and all these wonderful gadgets now that you can get are great as long as you update the software and you have the latest drivers or the latest um, operating system of Android or Apple app. All right, you need to update it for it to be accurate. With this system, there's no need to update anything. All right, as long as you're using Stellarium and the Stellarium is set in your location and time, you have no problems in finding these faint fuzzies. It really is easy. And I must admit, I didn't get quite, I didn't manage to get to show you a lot more because of the moon. It is a real shame. However, what you've got to learn from this as well is that, as you can see, I want to prove to you guys and girls that these setting circles really does work. And like always with my videos, I provided no cuts to the video or any edits. All right, I wanted to prove to you guys and girls just to show you how effective those setting circles really are. And like always, it wasn't quite as accurate as I, as I hoped. Maybe I was a degree out, 
but there may be some lottery intolerances where I've not got the base quite level, or maybe uh, there's my decals is slightly being off center, may, may actually give me an incorrect reading. But to be honest with you guys and girls, as, you're, as long as you're using an eyepiece, you can pretty much be able to find the objects quite well. And don't forget, please feel free to undertake some of the other mods, all right? These are just my ideas. Um, there are some people out there that are really clever and they'll have better ideas. But the main purpose of this video is to prove to you guys and girls that you can make modifications that are not destructible. You're not modifying the dub base. You can actually modify uh, the complete telescope setup without having to do any major alterations, okay? And you can get away with practically a lot of things there that I've just shown you. And I must admit, it really is quite an effective little piece of kit now I've got and I'm going to be quite happy to be using this telescope quite often now because I've got the telescope set up for my taste. There may be some more mods coming later, there may be something I need to improve on but it just shows you that a Dobsonian telescope like this, the, the modifications are endless, it really is. You can do so much uh, to this telescope, it really is. There are some people who have done uh, dub bases where you can adjust uh, the actual height on rough terrain. I've seen people fit uh, trolley wheels on there, uh, carry handles, you name it. There's loads of things you can do with a Dobsonian telescope. And the purpose of this video is to show you uh, the, the setting circles and show you some more cool modifications that you can undertake for yourself. I'm now I'm happy with the results so far, it really is. Uh, it is a real shame I couldn't take any pictures. So if you like watching this video, please hit a like button. And again, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the bell. By hitting this bell, we'll get you notified for any new videos I'll pu publish very, very soon. And don't forget to share the video. By sharing this video, someone else might have a Dobsonian telescope like this and they feel and they want to modify certain things on their telescopes. Again, this video doesn't just cover for sky watcher Dobsonians, this can cover a variety of Dobsonian telescopes, regardless of make and quality. Alright, these modifications can be adaptable for a lot of telescopes. So to that on, thanks for watching my video. Thanks again, thanks for watching, and I wish you all clear skies.